Uh, well, hello. Um, it's probably been four years since I've uh, made my last uh, political tirade video. Um, that was back in uh, 2011 after uh, the Democrats uh, lost uh, most of the um, seats that they had gained in 2008 with Obama. Um, and um, they, of course, were really unwilling to do any kind of reform. Um, I've talked about that in previous videos. Um, you'll probably notice I'm a little healthier now than I was back then. If you haven't noticed, uh, that's okay. You don't need to go back and see the earlier, one, the earlier videos. Uh, this one will do. This is now um, March 2015. Uh, we're looking at um, Hillary Clinton being the next uh, President of the United States, um, unfortunately. And um, Congress has been completely taken over by uh, the Republicans so they can uh, instigate whatever nasty policies they have in mind. Uh, the Democrats' fake reform attempts uh, probably didn't fool most people. I know uh, many, many, many uh, fewer uh, people who would normally vote are voting. I did not vote in this last election. Uh, I did vote for Lois Capps. Um, she's kind of okay. Um, a lot of people didn't vote. The, the, the millennials didn't vote because they, I think there was almost a design to discourage them from any idea of hope uh, with uh, Obama and what he did in his first term as president and what he's continuing to do now. I, I know that's a that's a little bit of a cynical, um, sad thing to say, but uh, I don't know for whatever reason the speeches he's given and the promises he's made uh, were never backed up by any action on his part. Uh, torture continues. Um, Guantanamo is still open. There's been really no help with jobs. Uh, the emphasis now is on social engineering. Uh, Women's rights versus working people's rights. That's the big emphasis now in the Democratic Party. Um, and the Democrats seem to be uh, of a mind that they're going to resign the whole idea of, of fair trade um, and any attempt to be made for that and continue with their social engineering that seems to get them some votes, but not really enough. Um, and they seem to be happy with that, even though, as I said, they've lost both houses of uh, Congress. Um, they still maintain the facade that they're, quote, attempting some uh, reforms, but they just can't do it now because of the Republicans. But you recall when they did have a majority in the Senate, they could have eliminated the filibuster, and they decided not to. Had they eliminated the filibuster, it would no, no longer have taken 60 votes to override um, objections to bills. Um, but that's a mechanism they use to justify the fact they can't make proper reforms. Um, currently, there are still no bankers in jail who need to go to jail for the millions upon millions of people's lives that were ruined. Uh, luckily, I used to be in the lending business, so I saw all that coming, uh, the adjustable rate mortgages, et cetera, et cetera and I had nothing to do with that. So, <clears throat> in other words, I didn't refinance my place and then get it taken away from me because I couldn't um, afford the new uh, adjustable rate that they were pulling in the 2007-2008 uh, uh, when they started foreclosing on everybody. None of those people who were involved in uh, all of the chicanery um, in the banking industry, none of them have gone to jail. Uh, Obama's administration has seen to that. If Hillary Clinton gets elected, that will continue. She is definitely in the pockets of the bankers. Uh, she will do what she is told uh, or what she's asked to do. And the focus will continue to be on social engineering. So we will get no economic reform. 
We will get no campaign finance reform. We will get no medical insurance reform. We will get no real consumer reform. Um, so basically, we're going to get the same kind of change that Obama gave us. We may not go to war as often, although Hillary was a deep-throated supporter of George Bush's invasion of Iraq. I think it's in her, her, her book. Uh, but we may not be going to any more wars because they've kind of learned that uh, going in there and toppling a, 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 a strong man like uh, uh, Saddam Hussein has led to um, further complications in the Middle East, we'll call it. Um, the right wing has total control of Congress, both houses, and that's going to mean some real mean, nasty legislation. Hopefully, I think the Democrats are hoping that the um, Hillary will sweep in some changes. Of course, if you look at her backers, uh, you will realize that you're not going to get any real reform. There's not going to be any trade reform, et cetera, et cetera. I've already said all of that. Uh, what you will get is more social engineering, more talk about uh, choice rights or abortion rights. Uh, more talk about uh, gays and, and lesbians, etc. More talk about uh, violence against women. And, and clearly, these are all important things. Um, they're just more along the lines of social engineering because the Democrats don't really, they're not really comfortable with the idea of economic reform. And as we know, poverty or lack of jobs leads to all kinds of extremes. That's one of the reasons a lot of the Midwesterners and Southerners have fled the Democratic Party is because they don't have any jobs anymore. Those were all taken away from them by Bill Clinton and George W. Bush in the so-called free trade agreements that were done back uh, 10 or 20 years ago. So uh, the Democrats are hoping that their social engineering ideology will benefit them and they will keep them somehow in power. NPR, which is no longer really public radio, it's now corporate radio. And you could have told that when you, when you listened to how poorly they handled the whole insane idea of invading Iraq. They were so afraid of getting their funding cut that they didn't vocalize any of the really important questions or d discover any of the answers to why George W. Bush was taking us to war. Um, and I'll get off that subject, and, and that's for another, another tirade of mine. So we're going to continue down the, the road of spying, uh, no habeas corpus, murdering American citizens, keeping people in Guantanamo, uh, fighting whatever wars corporate America and the powers that be want to fight in the Middle East to, quote, stabilize, uh, which we've seen um, uh, has not stabilized anything. The only real important thing over there are two things. Egypt because of the canal. Um, the Suez Canal is essential to European and American trade and that's why we're not allowing the uh, Muslim Brotherhood or anybody else in, in Egypt to control that state. Uh, and the other place of course is Israel who wants to go to war with Iran. Actually they don't want to go to war with Iran. They might but what they really want to do is get the United States to go to war with Iran. And that's why Bibi, uh, Bibi uh, Netanyahu, Bibi Rubozo Netanyahu was here uh, giving a speech uh, as an affront to the Obama administration. And, and frankly, I find it offensive beyond most of the things that the Israeli government has done lately for them to do this. So I'm going to end this one right now because... Um, I've got more to say, but you've heard enough from me, of, from me today. So long. Stay tuned.